Hi, my name is Sierra. Tell us. Um, I wanted to tell my story because I feel like I have a unique story. Um, a lot of the things that I've experienced in life is not the norm or the stereotypical um, life of a black woman. <laughs> I grew up in the desegregation program. Um, so as a child, I went to predominantly white schools from first grade all the way until high school and even college. Um, and I just shared some experiences of being in the desegregation program, um, getting bused to and from school every day for about an hour um, each way. Um, and just some of the things we did and also just share some experience of um, having a really solid education and having a really great school to be a part of um, and how as a teacher I wanted to bring that to the schools that I worked in. Have you ever played football on a bus? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody ever? So basically um, you got one person that's a quarterback um, they go all the way to the end of the bus, you know, where the emergency door is, where, like, if you slip and fall, you can fall out the bus. Um, so they'll stand right there. Um, they'll turn their back, like, high go seat, and everybody hides in the seats. And, you know, they say go. And so their goal is to run from the back of the bus to the front of the bus without being tackled. And we're hiding in the seats, waiting to tackle. So, so you had to get a t good tackle, though, because you know you can contact them, but they can keep, keep running. So um, that was one of the games we played. Uh, it was fun, other than the bus driver sometimes was petty and would slam on the brakes for some reason, um, like we were annoying her or something. Um, but I mean, it's an hour ride. You got to make the most of it, right? Um, so my nephews are actually in second and third grade, and they are in the desegregation program to this day. So it's just crazy how education is still separate. Uh, we still have separation in the schools, period. Um, and I kind of have to remind my sister of some things like, you know, we were fortunate and you kind of got to be a little easy on my nephews. Uh, one of them got in trouble for picking up a poster off the floor and on the bus. And she was just kind of going in, he picked up a poster. I was like, sis, we played football <laughs> on the bus. Like that's 45 minutes, like let that man live. Um, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm kind of that auntie though. I save them all the time. It's just what it is. Um, so yeah, they're in the desegregation program. Like I said, it was a great education for me. I love my schools. Uh, I love the food there. You know, the food ain't what it used to be and I can preach this, but one thing we had was like tropical smoothies. So you can buy smoothies during lunch. <laughs> strawberry kiwi, strawberry banana. Like during lunch, like you got your lunch and you got a smoothie. I think it was supposed to be a healthier option, but I got both. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we uh, had great food, we had great teachers, teachers that believed in you, teachers that even in, in your worst moments, um, they saw you for, for who you were. They didn't see you for your worst moments, they saw you that, you know, that's a moment, but this is not who you are. The way education is now, we're really, really, we're really trying to fix things, we're really trying to make things better. Um, there's a movement of education reform, especially here in Memphis. And a lot of times you can get caught up in, am I doing enough? Am I, you know, growing kids enough? Am I teaching enough? Am I planning enough? Um, and I believe that shaped me to constantly step back and say, okay, even if I don't have enough to give um, in these schools, that um, even if I feel like I don't have enough, that what I'm giving, um, God will multiply <laughs> and he will make better. Like even in my story, in my situation, it wasn't perfect. Um, there were definitely, um, it was a story, it wasn't a perfect story, but he used everything um, in my life for uh, a reason and a purpose. And so just knowing that I don't have to give kids this perfect education or this perfect experience um, for them to be okay, um, but I do want to give them the best possible experience that I can. Um. So fast forward, I'm in Memphis, I'm a teacher, and I have one particular student that, oh man, you know, he was one of my favorites, he grew on me, but he was a class clown, so we had our differences, cause you know, I'm all about instruction. When I'm in here, and when I'm in here, I don't waste my time, we own it, I'm not letting no jokes pass unless I'm making a joke. <laughs> um, so we kinda had our eyes, and once, he, you know, we gotta understand that he became one of my favorites. Um, but I remember one particular time when he was getting picked up from school, um, he was being picked up by Big Brother. And he, for some reason, you know how late pickup is, and 
the kids are not where they're supposed to be. They're kind of in somebody's room begging for snacks so they can sweep, you know, kind of getting that exchange going on at the end of the school day. So he was somewhere where he wasn't supposed to be. So that ticked Big Brother off. And then he gets to, you know, wherever he was being dismissed from. And Big Brother said something to him, and he said something back. And for some reason, that made Big Brother feel like, well, I'm justified in putting my hands on you. And so he grabbed my student by the neck, choked him, and put, put him up against the wall at the school building. Um, so in this moment, of course, the counselor, the principal, different teachers come in, rush in, break it apart. Um, and I'm in my room just kind of prepping for the next day, doing my whiteboard protocol, and in comes in. <laughs> You know, you, you got to get that done. <laughs> but in comes my student, and he's just distraught. He's crying. He's, like, just broken. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is going on? So I just hold him, and um, I don't know why he's crying, but I'm just like, I'm here, you know, whatever. And so about a minute later, he honestly never calmed down within that minute um, to tell me what was going on. The counselor comes in behind him and is like, um, this is what happened. Tells me about Big Brother. And she was like, you know what, tell us the crazy thing is, and let me, before I tell you this, um, tell you how the setup of the school was. So where he picks him up is downstairs. And then you have the main office kind of right across from there. You have the admin suite. You have classrooms on both sides. And then you go up two sets of steps, and then you have more classrooms. My class was at the very end of the hallway, second to last door um, to the right, if you cared about that. Um, <laughs> So find out that uh, from the counselor, she tells me the story, and she's like, tell us, we're all there. The principal's there, the counselor's there. We're trying to console him, and he's pushing us off. And we're, like, trying to figure out what is he doing. And so, like, he pushes them off and runs to my room. <laughs> Ran up steps, past all these classrooms, past the office. Like, he could have went anywhere, but for some reason, he knew I would be there, and he knew I would be there physically, and I would be there emotionally for him. And that, I was already emotionally on edge, like, with the situation, but the fact that he came to my room, um, that just did something for me. Um, so I always want to bring that. Any school that I'm in, I want kids to know that I am there for them emotionally, I'm there physically. Um, and because I was blessed, it's not because I'm great. Um, honestly, I'm not so great. I have my moments, I have my days, like everybody. But because I was great, um, greatly blessed and greatly graciously given this education um, and these people that show me these things, I'm able to give that to my students. And I just want to be that safe place for them when they come into the building. Um, so thank you. So my advice or my uh, parting words for teachers would be to teach the whole child. Um, you don't know their story. You don't know the ins and outs. And you are enough. You're giving enough. Um, and just know that each child that's in your care and under you, um, they are looking up to you. And they have more needs than just intellectual. Um, so take the time to know those needs and do your best to meet them. Um, so teach the whole child. <laughs>